Good morning, people of God, everyone all across this world and country. We thank you this morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. We love you. We thank you for joining us today uh, for our time of worship, our weekend worship right here at NH Image Worship Center. I'm so grateful and so honored this morning that you have chosen uh, to be with us on this morning. I am excited about what God is going to release today. I pray that your heart is open to receive what the Spirit of the Lord is going to say to us today. He is moving in a mighty way in this season, and I pray that your heart is open. I pray that your faith is renewed in this season. I pray that God will begin to speak to you in supernatural ways in this season because God is a great God. This is our season to manifest, to produce what God has already placed on the inside of us. I am excited about what God is releasing in our life in this season. This is a season for us to be happy. Uh, this is a season for us to walk by faith and not by sight. This is a season for us to get everything that God has promised uh, for us in this season. Listen, I don't want you discouraged. Uh, I don't want you depressed in this season. I want your heart open to what God is going to do in this season. Uh, no distractions, listen, no interruptions, but I want you to understand that the, there is a flow for God's favor in your life in this season. But listen, I want you to prepare for the favor. I want you to prepare for everything that God has for you in this season with your name on it. Listen, this is a great time that uh, for us to be alive. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to understand that this is your season to rejoice. God has so much in store for you this morning. I want you to prepare your hearts and your minds uh, because God has a great word for us um, this morning. And listen, I want you to prepare your heart. I want you to settle everything that's in your home, uh, in your car, wherever you may be at in the world today. I pray that you'll begin to allow uh, your, your space uh, to be settled, that the Spirit of the Lord will speak to us. Listen, I am so grateful that God has allowed me to serve you this morning and to serve his word. Listen, just as we get ready to go, I want you to prepare um, your journals. I want you to prepare to take notes. Listen, we are a Bible church that we take notes, that we prepare our notes because we want to be prepared for the week. When God begins to speak to us, when he begins to bring confirmation on the word, um, that we can go back, that we can study, that we can prepare ourselves. Um, this is a great season for us to make sure that we're staying in the word of God and that we're staying connected uh, and making personal investments in everything that God is doing in our life. Listen, I'm committed uh, to meeting you here at these worship opportunities, and I don't care what's going on in the world. That it's, it's a privilege for us to serve you. It's an honor for us to serve you. It's a blessing for us to serve you. And I'm so grateful for those that's coming on. Good to see you, Mother Hopkins and um, Brother Durham. Uh, I almost called you Pastor Durham. Uh, good to see you, Brother Durham, this morning, uh, coming on this morning. But just before we get ready to go into worship, I want you to lift your hands up wherever you are this morning. And begin to tell God, thank you for making a way out of nowhere. Begin to tell God, thank you for blessing you. Thank God. Tell God, thank you for opening up your heart to receive what he has for you in this season. I want you to begin just to lift up your hands wherever you at. Allow this space to be consecrated for what God is going to do in your life this morning. Come on, lift up your hands and tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you for what you're about to receive, uh, not just in the word on today, but what you're about to receive in this season. God has great and mighty things in store for you. I'm so excited about what the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Listen, and in this season, we should be giving back to God. We should be giving back to God our praise. We should be giving God back to God honor with our lifestyle and what we do, not saying that we're going to be perfect. But as much as we can, we want to honor God with our life, honor God with our substance, honor God with how we live, honor God with how we treat people, just because we are created in the image of God to manifest in this season. I'm so excited that God has allowed us to be connected uh, to the kingdom in this season. Listen, there's no other place uh, that I'd rather be than in the will of God in this season. I'm so grateful this morning. Um, people of God, as we get ready to move forward this morning, uh, uh, I want you to um, do me a favor right where you are. I need you to share this post 
And as we get ready to move, I need you to comment on the post, but I also need you to like this post. I need you to share, share your faith. Allow other people to know that you're connected to Innis Image Worship Center by sharing your faith today. I want you to share your faith. I want you to share your posts. I want you to let everybody know that's in your sphere of influence this, this morning uh, that you are connected to what God is doing here at Ennis Image Worship Center um, this morning. I believe that God is going to speak to us mightily this morning, and I believe that God is going to do great and mighty things in our life. And listen, I'm excited um, this morning. Listen, I um, know that God has a word for us this morning. Listen, as we continue in our series, the series on faith, I want you to um, des- I want you to come each and every time that we come together, even in our prayer time. I want you to come desiring for God to do something for your life in this season. This is your season to manifest. This is your season to become everything that God has created you to be in this season. And so listen, I want you to come believing. I want you to come trusting. I want you to come with your heart open. I want you to come with your mind open by faith, believing that God is going to do great and mighty things in your life because he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, people of God, tonight, uh, uh, we are in, um, this morning, we are in the series um, entitled Faith in All Caps. This is a, fa- is a season where our faith needs to be big. Uh, this is a season where our faith needs to be strong. Uh, this is a season where our faith uh, should take on a different dimension, where we begin to trust God, that we begin to honor God with who we are and the things that we do in this season. And so listen, I pray today, uh, as you begin to move and matriculate in the coming months, in the week, in this week, I want you to begin to allow your faith uh, to be in uh, to be in action. I want you to allow your faith to manifest in this season. I want you to live by your faith, not just by your paycheck. I'm just not by your friends. I want you to live by the currency of the kingdom, which is your faith. Uh, so listen, we today. Our subject uh, matter today is hang time, hang time. I want to speak uh, from the subject hang time. As I was in, in prayer, God told me to tell you that this is a season uh, where for some of us, for the majority of us, uh, we're going to be in a process of manifesting everything that God has for us. This is a season for us uh, to walk in uh, fruitfulness. This is a season for us to walk in divine favor. But this is also a season for us to flourish But as we begin to plant our seeds, as we begin to obey the voice and the word of God, we're going to have to plant. And listen, when you plant, there's a process. And sometimes that process seems um, that it's not producing. But I want you to understand that uh, this concept, this, this, this thought, hang time, that God wants you to have hang time in this season so you won't so you won't give up, so you won't get discouraged. And that you won't add any other thing to your plate that's out of the will of God. I don't want you to get lonely in this season where you're doing other things. I want you to make sure that you're asking God to give you what you need to sustain in this season because God is on your side. Uh, listen, let's go um, to, and right into prayer. And listen, then I'm going to begin uh, to give you what I believe that God has released in this atmosphere today. And I pray that your hearts are open. Uh, Father, we pray as we come into your presence today. That you will bless us, that you allow us to receive from you, that you will touch this word, that you'll speak to our hearts, that you'll speak to our mind, that you will give us what we need in the name of Jesus. We came to feast off your word. We came to live in this moment and to receive from a risen Savior. So, Father, today, we pray that you'll bless us. Give us what we need in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you, people of God. Today, our subject matter is hang time. I want to call your prayerful attention um, to the book of um, Galatians this morning. I want to call your um, prayerful attention to the book of Galatians this morning. I know that this is a familiar text, but I believe that this is the thought. This is the scripture. This is the place where God wants us as his people this morning. And so I want you to go with me to the book of Galatians this morning, chapter number six, uh, verse number nine. And listen, I want to read two translations this morning just to give us more content and more understanding of what the Holy Spirit is going to say to us this morning. Good to see you, um, Didi and Tori. Good to see you guys coming on this morning. I want you to go with Genesis chapter numbers, not Genesis, Galatians chapter number six, verse number nine. I'm going to read them out of two translations this morning. 
The scripture says this morning, and don't allow yourself to be weary. Don't allow yourself to be weary or disheartened in planting good seeds. I'm reading out of uh, the Passion Translation. Don't allow yourself to become weary or disheartened in planting good seeds. For the season of reaping, the wonderful harvest you have planted is coming. Hear me, people of God. This is, this is a great word. This is a great word. Don't allow yourself to be weary or disheartened in planting good seeds. For the season of reaping, the wonderful harvest you have planted is coming. Let me read it to you also out of the Living Bible to give us a more uh, content to this text on today. It says here in Galatians chapter number six, verse number nine, and I read it out of the Living Bible. It says, let us not get tired of doing what is right. Hear me, people, God, for after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't get discouraged and give up. And let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't get discouraged and give up. The Passion Translation again says, and don't allow ourselves to be weary or disheartened in planting seeds for the season of reaping a wonderful harvest you have planted is, uh, is, 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 is coming. I want you to understand, people of God, that the season of harvest is coming the season of manifestation is coming. The season of manifestation is among, upon us in the season. I want to start by, this, by saying this morning uh, to all, everyone that's watching that this is our season to manifest. I want you to declare that over your life this morning. I want you to understand that this is our season to manifest. Say with me, this is our season to manifest. I want you to understand manifest means to produce what has already been proven. I want you to understand the people of God that in this season that God has did some things and placed some things on the inside of you that he has already produced. Over in Genesis, we understand that he says over that us make men in our likeness uh, after us that they may have dominion over the earth, over everything in the earth. There are certain authorities, there are certain things that God has placed on the inside of you to manifest in the season. So what God has placed on the inside of you will come forth. I want you to understand that this morning that God has touched you, that God has given you everything that you need in this season to come forth. I declare as God begins to speak to us in this season, we're going to begin to see um, people in our life, including ourselves, begin to go to different levels in God based on everything that God has put on the inside of us to produce. Listen, you are not what, 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 the, what the culture has said you are. You are not the statistics that people have said that you are. You are not what, what, what people are, are in, in, in other ethnic groups have said that you are. You are everything that God has said that you are in this season. And I want you to understand that this is your season to manifest. Uh, the, today, our subject is hang time. I want you to understand this, uh, this, this concept of hang time. Um, people have got this morning. Hang time is, it is the time or space or the environment from where we start something until we reach our goal or destination. Hang time is the time, space, or environment uh, from where we start something until we reach our goal. Uh, it is the process between the, my starting point, my destiny, or my destination. It is the starting point between my, 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 my destination or my destiny. Uh, what, what makes the hang time, the in-between time, the sometimes the unbearable time, sometimes the process bearable is the end result. Michael Jordan in his in his in his in his in his, in his greatest time uh, had the ability to hang in there uh, from the point that he started until he got to the rim. He floated in the air. He had uh, this this unique gift 
to, to, to hang in the air until he reached his goal, which was putting the ball in the hoop. I came to tell you this morning that God is releasing certain things in our life in this season to produce. And listen, there is going to be a series of hang times until we reach our goal. And listen, I came to, to encourage you this morning to don't give up when you don't see everything produce or manifest quickly as you desire. Because listen, I want you to understand that something else is at work that God is blessing. God is preparing. God is positioning people in your life to help you get to the place that he has for you. Um, that's why you have favor on your job and you're asking God, God, why these people love it on me the way that they love it on me? Why? Because God has given you a unique ability to get other people's attention in the midst of you going through the process of your evolution and everything that God God has created for you in this season. I want you to understand, people of God, that the hand of God is upon your life to do great and mighty things in this season. And yes, we go through certain seasons of, of being productive. We go through certain seasons of being unproductive. But I don't want you to get discouraged or disheartened in the meantime and doing what is right. Because, listen, you are only in a space of hang time. When Michael Jordan begins to, uh, uh, be, uh, begins to uh, uh, go against his component, uh, it may be two or three people at one time. But when he got his focus on the, uh, on the end game, the, 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 the end result, the goal, he did not allow anything, not even space, to get in the way. He utilized the space to get him to his goal. I want you to understand in this season, as God begins to prepare you, I want you to understand, I don't want you to get weary. I don't want you to get distracted. I don't want you to allow interruptions. I don't want you uh, to allow anything to get in your way because God is allowing you to be prepared as you go through the process. Declare that with me this morning, that I am being prepared as I go through the process, that the hand of God is upon my life to get me through the process. My faith is released in this season to get me through the process. This is your season to produce on the level that God has called for you to produce in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, declare that this morning. I want you to understand that what makes the hang time bearable is our ability to always have the end result in mind. I want you to understand the things that you're praying to God for. You're asking God, God, help me, help my body. I don't want to be sick. Uh, for some of you, you're asking God, God, do a miracle in my mind. I don't, I, I don't want to have mental challenges. Some of you are saying, listen, life is tough now because of this pandemic. I want you to begin to ask God to give you what you need in order to maintain through the hang time. I want you to understand that God wants to do and he wants to build you up in your faith in this season to be able to meet the challenges of this moment, understanding that with God, all things are possible to them that believe. I'm excited about this word. Listen, God told me to tell you this morning, uh, in the midst of us waiting on the Lord, and I'm going to the text, in the midst of us waiting on God, in the midst of us going through the process, and the midst of us hearing the voice of God and the midst from the point that we heard God's voice to the point that God meets the promise of what he what he told us uh, in, in private. I want you to understand that sometimes the process is not always easy, but you have to stay in the process, remembering that there is an end result to what God is about to do in my life. I want you to write that down. There is an end result to everything that God has planted in my life. The Bible declares it like this. It says all things are working in concert. All things are working together. All things are working in concert with the will of God concerning us. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, that is called according to his purpose. I want you to understand as a believer, that you are in the will of God to produce. You are in the will of God to produce after the what you say. So that's why in this season, when you begin to allow your faith to begin to release, you're going to have to watch what you say because by faith, you're going to have the fruit of your words. But listen, I want you to understand as you begin to go through the process of receiving the evidence of what's not seen, I want you to understand there is a process that God wants you to be comfortable in. Hang time is, 
is, is the place where I begin to be comfortable in the things that God has declared over my life over my wife life, over my business, over my children. I don't care what it looks like that God is giving me the ability to go through the process because God has everything in divine order. I don't care what we're in in the season. I want you to understand that God has everything in divine order. The sovereignty of God is going to allow us to go through the process and the season of the hang time. Hear me, people of God, this morning. Uh, God told me to tell you, I want to give you two things, and I'm going to go right back into the scripture. There is a consistency. There is a flow we must maintain when we are planning in this season. If you're planning anything in this season, you got to stay consistent. Why? Because people are counting on your consistency to see the will of God, but also the manifestation of what you're about to produce based on your consistency and based on you staying in a flow, based on you staying in the rhythm of God and what God has placed in your heart to produce in this season. So whatever God is telling you to do in this season, listen, I want you to understand in the middle of us seeing the manifestation station of what we are planning that you have to stay consistent you have to stay in a flow you have to stay in a rhythm listen while you're planning listen you got to be praying while you're planning you got to be confessing while you're planning you got to believe God that God is going to allow what you desire in this season to come to pass based on you planning when you plant you got to believe when you're building you got to see beyond the natural eye when you're doing anything in the kingdom of God by faith you're going to have to trust God to deliver. This is your season to hang in there. Thank you, Bishop Sheer, Kiki. This is your season to hang on in there. Why? Because God has something supernatural for your life in this season. So while you're planning, people of God, I want you to understand that you got to be consistent. You got to stay in the flow. You got to stay with, with your prayer life. You got to stay in the word of God. You got to stay around people that can invest in your mental capacity that's giving you successful tips and patterns that you need to come forth and to manifest. Listen, a part of you has to manifest. You got to become. You are in your becoming stage. You are becoming everything that God has already told you that you're becoming. For some of you, you're putting your toe in the water to test to see the temperature. God is saying you need to get all in, man of God, woman of God. You got to get all in in this season. You got you got to put everything that you that's in you. You got to put it all in in this season. I'm here. I, I, I remember my pastor saying for some of us. We have never put all of ourselves in nothing. We only we only put a piece of us in, in certain things because we want to see how it's going to work. We want to we want to be in our head. We want to say if, if it worked, at least if it don't work, I can at least do this. Listen, God is saying in this season that he wants you to put everything in it. He don't want you to leave nothing out. He wants you to put your heart in it. He wants you to put your vulnerability in it. He, 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 he wants you to put your mind into it. He, 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 he don't want you to give up in this season based on you're saying, listen, I don't have what it takes. I don't have the money. God is saying, I create the money. Not, not the Federal Reserve. He says, everything in the earth belongs to me. He says, I'll even hold the heart of the king people in my hand to turn it in the way that I want. I want you to understand that God has the code to unlock destiny in this season. What God wants us to do in this season to begin to understand hang time. How do I stay motivated? How do I stay consistent? How do I stay desiring what God placed on the inside of me when, listen, certain things come up to discourage me or obstacles come in the way that begins to, to, to try to derail me spiritually and also my equilibrium to get off so I cannot produce what God has called me to do produce. I want you to understand the reason why God has created you with the pattern that you have. He allowed you to be uh, to go to the school that you went through. He allowed you to be around certain friends that he allowed you to be around. He allowed you to go to a certain college here. For some of you, you've been in, in the armed forces. Wherever you have been able to, to matriculate in this season, God has a pattern behind how he has allowed you to be all your life to get you to this point to be able to produce and to manifest the reason why you're around the people you are around now because God wants to show them 
that he has called you to manifest. This is your season to walk in the power and the anointing uh, of God that's on your life to manifest. But in the meantime, while you're producing, in the meantime, while the seed is in the ground, somebody need to declare that this morning. I have seed in the ground. I'm putting seed in the ground. I'm investing into my ministry. I'm investing into my career. I'm investing into my personal life. I'm rebranding myself. I'm doing everything that God has put in my spirit in this season. And listen, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to I'm going to be comfortable in the hang time because I know that God is at work in my life. I want you to declare that over yourself this morning. Say with me that God is at work in my life. Somebody put that in the comment section this morning. God is at work in my life. When you begin to understand that God is at work in your life, it gives you the tenacity to produce. It gives you the tenacity to stay in the flow of what God is doing. It gives you the the, the tenacity to stay consistent with what God is doing. You cannot start and stop the worst the worst time, the worst type of vehicle to drive is when you got gas and, and water in your tank. You ever pulled up at a, a gas station? You fill the tank up halfway. Thank God it ain't all the way on full. And you put gas in your, uh, in, your, in your tank and you come to find out that the gas has water in it. When you begin to start, it begins to stop and start. As a matter of fact, it begins to eat up certain things in your, in, in your tank. And it caused you a delay in going forward because of what's in your tank. I want you to understand, people of God, you have to invest in yourself in this season. The right things, you have to put the right things in your tank because you don't want to stop and go. You're going to have to have a dimension of faith that's going to cause you to be consistent, even though what you're giving birth to is not already done. A woman goes through certain trimesters to give birth. A building goes through a planning season before uh, it, 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 it evolves. It, it, it's constructed. A, a, a child has to go through a series of steps before the consistency or the rhythm they need to walk on their own. I want you to understand that the things that you're producing in this season has timing, has process connected to it. But God don't want you to give up. Because you are in a season of manifesting what God has already proven. God told me to tell you there has to be a consistency. There has to be a flow that we must have and maintain when we begin to plant. Uh, but we also have to allow what God told me to tell you. Don't allow what you see in the culture to discourage you or cause you to stumble as you plant. You plan it and then you begin to see somebody else do certain things and you jump and try to do that. God is saying, no, I need you to give consistency. I need you to pray. I need you to plant. I need you to be prepared for what you are planning in the season because your harvest is going to be different than the people that you're seeing. He told me to tell you, don't allow what you see in the culture to eclipse you from what you planted. Don't allow what you see in the culture to discourage you from what you're building. God told me to tell you that there, that, that there takes time to what you're doing. I want you to understand there's hang time in what you're planning. I want to also say to you uh, that God is building you up in this season to give you validation to what he's planted on the inside of you so people can see the process so they can trust God on a level that they have never seen him before because they see your witness. Man of God, woman of God, co-worker, whoever you are, the person that's, that's the saying, God, I need you to touch me in a special way. And listen, I'm planting my seeds of faith because I want a kingdom result in my life. I want my body to be healed. I want my, my mind to be uh, 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 in, in, a, in a place that, that, that is healthy. I, I want my career to take off. I want my children to be blessed in this season. Uh, I, I don't want to do so much for everybody else and do so less for me. God, give me balance so I can produce in this season so I would not become discouraged based on what I see in the culture. But I get into a flow. I get into a rhythm that I will begin to produce what God has called me to produce in this season. Look at this, people of God. 
verse number uh, nine, uh, uh, Galatians number six, verse nine. I'm reading out the, the, uh, the, the Passion Translation. Hear what they're saying. It says, don't allow yourself to become weary. I want you to understand that weariness is a threat to your destiny. Uh, but, but I want you to understand the human side of us at times get weary. Because we are working hard, we are trying to produce, and we don't see the end results. But I want you to hear what the Word of God, do you believe the Word of God? The Word of God says, don't become weary or disheartened, the text says, and planting good seeds. You got to turn, for some of you, baby, you got to turn on some music that's going to build your faith and, and, and begin to believe God as you begin to plant. Uh, you, you, you're going to have to begin to get around other people that's planning, that's speaking, that's trying to do other things uh, in their life and get around them, see what they're doing. So God can begin to speak to you through their example. Sometimes your mentor is some people that you're not connected to, but some people that you have access to see what they're doing that begins to give you the courage that you need to hang on in there while you're planting good seeds. The text says, do not be weary or disheartened while you're planting. For some of you, you are good people. You sow into other people's lives. You make sure other people are, have what they need. Don't get distracted because they cannot give back to you. The ground that you planted into is going to produce for you, not the person, the ground, the environment, the, 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 the atmosphere, the kingdom of God. God said when you, when, 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 when you pray in private, God will roar you open. Some of you, when you plant in private, God is going to allow you to see the fruit of what you're planting. Can I tell you, every seed that we plant goes into some dirt. It goes to an, into an unseen environment and we don't understand what's happening beneath the dirt. I want you to understand because that's God's business. As you plant, you got to release it and let it go. You want to remember where you planted at? You want to remember there's a, there's a season for you to get kicked back on what God has allowed you to plant it? But you don't want to get discouraged. You, you, you don't want to get weary. God said in this text, he says for us to not get weary, weary and, dis and disheartened when we're planting good seeds. I want to pronounce over your life that this is a season to plant good seeds. God is going to turn things around for you and you're going to begin to manifest what God has placed on, on the inside of you to manifest. I want you to say with me this morning, I'm going to continue to plant good seeds. I want you to declare that this morning. This is my season to plant good seeds. Your ability to plant good seeds in this season is going to allow you to produce a harvest that you didn't even expect. You're not going to just receive what you planted, but there's other connections to what you're planting in this season and the enemy would try his best to allow you to look at what's going around in the world and saying, God, why am I not producing? Why don't I have what I desire? God is saying, I need you to stay consistent and I need you to continue to plant good seeds. Look at the rest of this text. It says, for the season of reaping, the wonderful harvest that you have planted is coming. I don't want you to be discouraged in being a good person. I don't want you to be discouraged in providing for people in your space because there is a season of harvest. God has other people that he has put on assignment in your life to plant in your life when you don't even expect it. You're planning over here, but God is going to allow other people to come into your space to give you what you need. You just have to stay encouraged. And listen, you cannot allow what you see on Instagram to discourage you to do something crazy. Why? Because you don't think that what you have planted is producing on the level or the, at the velocity that you desire in this season. I want you to understand that God has anointed you to plant. God, God, God has anointed you to be patient. And listen, God is going to anoint you to reap. For some of you, you got to get out of the, the out of the head space where somebody's doing something for you. No, I'm good. No, I, I, I just did that for you. God is going to put people. Listen, for, for, for some of us, especially in our culture, we do good things for certain people and we don't want to take credit. 
And we, we, we have what I consider, and I'm not talking about the one, but I want to consider is false humility. And we're like, no, no, no. You know you need that. Get them a couple of dollars that they're trying to give to you. You, you know you need that opportunity to, to walk into that door to get that raise on that job. Get, get that, let them put the word in for you to your boss or to your supervisor or to the foreman. So don't walk in for uh, 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 and, and false humility thinking uh, that, that, that your false humility is going to get you somewhere. God has planted people in your life to produce for you in this season. So as you plant, I want you to expect. Uh, we, 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 we know how to give, but for a lot of us, we don't know how to receive. And the blessings of God that should be manifest in our life is, is, is like in a room locked up. I, I remember a man saying a story. He said that there was, there was a young man praying for blessings and he began to ask God to bless him. But everybody that came to bring him something, he would say, oh, no, 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 that's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. So what they begin to do, they begin to put it in the, in, in, in the mail room because he did not receive the package that they came trying to give to them. And listen, uh, he, he, he got one day and said, listen, I'm discouraged. I'm depressed. I have did all this. And a voice began to come to him and say, listen, all the things that you're praying about is just beyond the door of that opportunity. But every time that I sent somebody to give you something, you told them that you was good. And you prayed to me and asked me to bring you a package. So the young man get up, opens up the door and see in this room. Everything that he prayed for, he had to get out of his own mind. He had to get out of his own way, not understanding that his prayers was producing. I want you to understand that in this season, that when you begin to believe God by faith and that you begin to declare the word of the Lord over your life and that you begin to plant seeds of goodness, I want you to understand that as God to condition your mind to receive the harvest, the text says, uh, uh, for the season of reaping wonderful uh, harvest you have planted is coming. So you cannot be discouraged in seasons of planting well. Look at the other translation. It says, let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't get discouraged and give up. Your ability not to give up in this season is the gateway to what God has for you. But I want you to understand, you cannot give up and start being wretched. You cannot give up and say, listen, I'm going to go do this on the side. You got to stay consistent. Yes, it's hard. Yes, you're human. Yes, certain things. Listen, we can put all that as a reason why we do what we do. But I want you to understand that, that when God gives you this harvest that he's about to release in your life, when you're about to manifest you ain't going to have time to be distracted. You ain't going to have time for interruptions. I want you to understand that the text is teaching us this morning to not get weary in the hang time. Michael Jordan never got weary in the hang time. Why? Because he understand the end game. He understand the goal. He understand the destination. He did not let nobody, even if he had to jump over people, even if he had to do some moves uh, or cross over to get a person out of the way, he allowed the process to get him to his goal. What are you stopping or forfeiting in this season? Because you don't have the ability to wait. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart in certain seasons. As you wait, you have to ask God, God, give me the heart that I need to be patient. And teach me how to be patient because I done planted too many seeds that to receive the harvest. Hear me, people of God. I want you to understand uh, that God told me to tell you that, that your waiting season is your developing season. Your waiting season is teaching you how to ball on a different level. Let me just say it like I want it. Your, your waiting season is trying to teach you how to be the boss chick that you declaring on Instagram that you are. Your, your, your waiting season is, 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 is giving you discipline to receive and to manage the blessing of God on the, on, on the level that you desire. Your waiting season is allowing you to be consecrated for the assignment or the purpose that God has placed on your life to do great and mighty things in the earth. Your waiting season is preparing you for greater it's a season of preparation. 
Uh, your season of, manif of, of manifestation is coming. God told me to tell you as I was in prayer this morning, your season of manifestation is coming. You're asking God, God, heal my body. I want you to understand that you got to go through the hang time. You got to go through the process because everything that God has placed in your spirit to come to pass, it is coming to pass. You, you, you're just going to have to hang on in there. You're going to have to be of good courage. You're going to have to begin to focus your mind on the goal. And listen, you can't let no, nothing stop you. Listen, I want you to declare today that I'm not allowing nothing to stop me. Why? Because I'm going all the way up. I'm going to the place that God has consecrated me to go to in this season. And everything that God told me that's coming to pass in my body, in my mind, on my, on my child, wherever it may be, in my ministry, in my relationships, my good will not be evenly spoken of. God hand is upon my life to do great and mighty things. God told me to tell you your season of manifestation is coming. Your season of manifestation to see what has been proven on the inside of you. What, 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 what you have seen by faith. You got to get around some faith people in the season. You, you can't be around people that's trying to. This is trying to do whatever, and they saying whatever. You got to get around some people that believe in this season. So, so what's on them can come on you. Listen, when you believe and when you walk by faith, it's contagious. So listen, in my hang time, I want other people to see that I'm floating in the air, that, I, that I'm believing God by faith, that God is about to do everything that I'm believing him to manifest in this season. But you got to get you, you got to be around certain people that's going to feed the fire, that's going to feed the burning, that's going to feed your faith, that's going to fuel you with the word, that's going to speak over your life and tell you you can do it, that's going to be in the midst of, of your environment, that's going to shine bright as a diamond. You have to understand that God wants you in a different atmosphere in this season. Why? Because it's your season to manifest. It's your season to be encouraged. It's your season to get what God wants on you. I feel it this morning. It's, it's your season to be inspired beyond what you saw all of your life. That was only a precursor to give you the determination that you need, man of God, to walk by faith and not by sight. If, if you done been through all the hell you've been through, God has positioned you for greatness. God, God has put you on a pathway to have resilience that other people don't have. They're looking at you like you're crazy, not understanding. Listen, all the stuff that you've been through was preparing you for this moment. It was, it was preparing you to, to, to take your family to the next level. It, it was preparing you to stay encouraged. It was preparing you to feed your brothers and sisters. It was preparing you to bring God's people together. The, everything that you have been through was preparing you for this moment. But you have to believe God in the hang time. You have to trust God in the hang time. Don't, don't get distracted and, and be everywhere doing everything. That, that, that ain't what you called to. You got to stay focused. You got to stay in the will of God. You got to stay prayed up. You got to continue to hear the voice of God. Why are you in the hang time? Why are you in the process? Because you got to remind yourself about the end goal. God told me that I'm going to have success. He told me that I'm going to be the lender and not the borrower. He told me that if I walk by faith and not by sight, I can have whatsoever I desire. So I can't get distracted uh, dealing with me mediocrity, uh, dealing with stuff that's minor when God has called me to a major life. I want to declare that God has called you to a major life to manifest. But you cannot get weary in planting good seeds and go plant some other type of seeds. The text presupposes. If I'm planting, if he said, don't get weary in planting good seed. It presupposes that there's other seeds that we can plant. I don't want you to get discouraged in planting good seeds. Stay focused. Ask God, 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 center me in this season. Center my heart. Everything that's going on in the world, God has put things on pause. As everything that's going on, ask God, God, center my heart. Because listen, I know that you have something greater for me. I want you to declare with me one more time this morning. I have seed in the ground. Thank you, William. I have seed in the ground. And what I have been planning, God is going to allow me to manifest. God told me to tell you that our faith produces in the now. Say with me, my faith produces in the now. 
But sometimes what we what, what, what our faith is producing in the now still has to go through a process. Sometimes it happens right away. For, for other times, it has to go through the process because God is allowing you to see the tenacity. He's allowing you to see what you're made of. He's allowing you to see the strength that you have. He, he's allowing you to see what he has placed on the inside of you to manifest what has already been proven. God told me to tell you that our faith produces in the now our ability to manifest its process in which is, is, is process uh, in the place in which it comes from. The process is the place where my faith produces. Write that down if you're writing. My process is the place of where my faith produces. Sometimes my process is the place, I want you to get this, or where my faith is producing. Let me say this and I'm already, I'm almost done. You have to understand that God has given you what you need to produce. You have to understand that the hand of God is upon your life to produce in a greater mighty way. When Peter asked God, Christ, to walk out on the water, you have to understand that Peter was walking in a dimension that was greater than him. But he had to, he had to understand that even in a, in a storm, there's hang time. The Bible says that Peter in the text asked Christ, if that's you, bid me to come. And he said, he said, come. But in the, in the hang time, Peter got distracted by the winds and, and the boisterous uh, uh, of the sea. I want you to understand that in this season, when certain things begin to happen in your life, certain people around you begin to go through certain things. I don't want you to allow that to distract you. I want you to stay on the water. And I want you to understand that as you get ready to go with Jesus, you may have started out in the ship and on your way, certain things may begin to transpire. But listen, I want you to understand that Peter had to understand what hang time means. And Jesus said to him in the text, he says, why did you doubt? Why, why did you get in the middle of going to your destination, to your end result, and you gave up midstream in the air? I want you to understand that also Joseph had to deal with hang time. The Bible says that he had the favor of his father, but his brothers did not understand his plight. To success, they did not understand his ability to dream and cast him in the pit. Peter, I mean, Joseph, uh, went through hang time in the pit. He went through hang time in the palace. He went through hang time in jail. He had to go through the process of becoming everything that God wanted him to come. But not only did Peter and Joseph had to deal with hang time. Let's call our Savior to the record this morning, Jesus. In the, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the in the cross experience had to deal with hang time. The Bible, uh, 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 we, we in our culture say that, 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 that they hung him high. Huh. They stretched him wide. He, he died for you and I. Why? Because he was dealing with the hang time. He understand that the end result, that if he can just in, in that moment uh, deal with the hang time, if, if he can just stay on the cross, the old rugged cross. That the, that the end result was going to produce life everlasting for everybody. I want you to understand this morning that just as Christ sacrificed and stayed on the cross, I want you to stay in the process. You know, what, what, what you're going through, God has said, I can get you through. I just need you to do like Christ and stay on your cross. Stay, stay, stay in the midst of, of seeing what you planted grow. I need you to stay focused. Uh, see your body healed. Stay on the cross and believe God for manifestation. And, uh, hear me, people of God. I, I want you to stay uh, believing for your kids. Listen, don't give up because they sent something to you saying what they desire. I want you to stay on the cross believing that God is going to allow you to manifest. I don't care about the conversation um, that you had with that person that you desire. Stay on the cross. Because the hang time is going to manifest. The, the hang time is going to produce something greater than what you see. The text says, be not weary or disheartened in planting good seeds. Because the blessing of the wonderful harvest is, is about to come. Your healing is coming because Christ was on the cross. 
because he understood the hang time. I feel God. Uh, you you, you got to understand the thing that you desire in this earth is coming to pass. Why? Because you believe God. You believe Christ. And he stayed in the midst of the hang time. He did not get weary and taking the beatings that he took for us. He, he did not get weary and, and, and going um, to, 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 to hell and taking the keys of, of death in the grave. He did not get weary. He stayed in the midst of hang time so you can produce, so your family can be successful, so, so you can have the favor of the kingdom, so you can walk by faith and not by sight, so you can believe in something greater than you, so you can tell you the hood that Jesus saved. Can we tell the hood that Jesus saved? Can we tell the culture that God is still saving souls? I want you to understand that God wants us to be saved. He understands that we're not going to be perfect. That's why Jesus took it on the cross. He understood the hang time. He, he understood the in-between time. He understood the process. He says, Father, forgive them. I ain't getting off the cross for they know not what they do. And the hang time and distractions come. Say, God, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. <laughs> and when, when dis disruptions come, I want you to say, God, the, Father, allow me to stay focused in this season. Because the end result is greater than what I see. The end result is greater than the pain that I'm feeling. The, the, the end result is greater than the discontentment that I feel in my spirit. I want you to do this. I want you to wait on the Lord. And be of good courage because he's going to strengthen your heart. He's going to show you what you need to do in this season in the middle of the hang time. This is the word of the Lord for you in this season that God wants you to stay in the hang time. He, he don't want you to get discouraged. He wants you to plant good seeds. He wants you to speak well of people. He don't want you to get, listen, some of that stuff that you desire and people that you still trying to be around. God, God has already told you in your spirit that ain't it. Stay away so God continue to speak. So God can continue to, to allow you to receive everything that he has for you. Can I pray with you this morning? God, it's our will for your people to manifest everything that you have called for us to manifest in this season. I pray for courage to maintain. I pray for courage to be consistent. I pray for courage to be in the flow. I pray for courage to cover our mind. I, I pray for courage to speak to our hearts. I, I pray for, for courage for us to stay and be prepared for the right person that you're sending. I, I pray that the, for courage to deal with the, with, with the, the intertwinings of our marriages. I pray, God, that you won't allow divorce to hit homes, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will dismantle the spirit of divorce. I, I pray, God, that you begin, God, to raise us up to be great men, to have great personalities, to, to, to love God and to show the world that we love you. I pray, God, that you would touch us as women and, 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 and women and, and girls across this country to be what God is calling us to be, that we won't have to be permissuous, that we won't have to be in any and everything, that we can stay in the presence of God and live for God. I pray that you would bless us. I pray that you will keep us. I pray that you'll bless that son and daughter to deal with the hang time. Keep our sons and daughters covered, Father. Give us the spirit that we need to teach and to train them to be everything that God called them to be. Not in judgment, but in the sovereignty of God. Not in judgment, but, 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 but with, the, with the empathy of God. Not in judgment, but in care. And with the ability to love unconditionally. We pray for your people this morning. Give us the ability to deal with the hang time. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and thank God. People of God, I believe that this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. And I believe that God has some great uh, and mighty things in store for us in this season. And I want you to trust God in the hang time. Don't allow interruptions. Don't allow discouragement. Don't allow distractions to get you off what God is doing in this season where you become weary or distracted as you plan it. You have too much to plan to be distracted. You have too much to plan to give up. This is your season to manifest. There may be a person today that's watching us saying, listen, 
I want to be saved. Pastor, I want to connect with your ministry. I want to connect with the church and I want to be a part of what God is doing. If that's you this morning, I want you to hear these words that I want to release. The Bible says with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and with the heart man believe unto righteousness. I want you to say with me, Father, I believe that you have risen Christ from the dead in order to save me from the penalty of sin. I believe in you. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. I pray for those that have connected with our ministry, that have connected to the kingdom. I pray that you'll do me a favor today and that you'll go to Innis Image Worship Center right here on Facebook. Send us a message that you have connected with the, with the work of this ministry and that you have connected with the kingdom of God. Listen, I'm so excited that you have joined uh, with us this morning, and I'm believing that God is going to do great and mighty things in your life in this season. I want you to stay connected to everything that we're doing in this season. Listen, God is up to some amazing things. Listen, we'll be back Tuesday night at 7, 10 p.m. I want to make sure that you put an alert in your phone, um, that you put it in your calendar, wherever you need to put it at, to remind you uh, to meet us here in worship, because we believe that God is speaking to us in this season to allow our faith to be in all caps. Listen, today, as we continue um, in, our, in, our, in, our, in worship, I want you to understand that, that giving is a part of the believer's responsibility to the kingdom of God and the church. Our ability to give begins to tell God, I trust you with what I have. I'm not going to trust you with my soul and I trust you to provide for me. When you provide for me, Father, I give back to you 10% because, listen, we believe the word. The Bible says, believe that, that if, if, when we give 10% uh, that, that God begins to say, prove me now here, saith the Lord, that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you would not have room enough to receive. I want you to understand you don't want no money that, 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 that has not been consecrated because of your level of giving. This is a ministry that you can give to. This is a ministry that you can trust God with your giving. I want you to make sure that you begin to give God 10%. If people give you $10, trust God to do business with God and give God a dollar. Do business with God. Giving and offering is where you do business with God and you tell God, I trust you with the 10% because I know you're going to bless the 90%. Listen, for those that are giving offerings this morning, I want you to give your offerings. And for those that are sowing into the life of the pastor of this ministry, put P-O-L next to your co in the comment section. And we'll make sure that we allocate the resources to the proper place. Let's pray for your gift this morning. And let's believe God that God is going to bless your gift supernaturally in this day. Father, I pray that you will bless these people's gifts today. As they begin to give, as they begin to sow uh, with everything that they have, as they begin to believe you by faith and trust you with their seed, I pray that you'll consecrate them and give them a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I love you, people of God. Listen, this coming Saturday at 12 noon, we will be at our communion service. I need you to prepare your hearts and mind. I need you to get your crackers. I need you to get bread, whatever you're going to use. I need you to go get your wealth, the juice, whatever you're going to use and be prepared for communion. I will be doing communion right here live at 12 noon this coming Saturday. This is our communion service. It's not long. It's 10 to 15 minutes long. I want to make sure that you're on time to receive the holy sacraments of God and for us to be able to speak a word over your life in this season. Listen, I love you with the love of God. I'm praying that you will be able to deal with the hang time, the time and place where you started what God told you till you get to the end result, the destination. Listen, I'm praying for you this week. This is your season to live by faith in all caps. God bless you.